All right, so today we have a uh, six moto. It's a, it's a little tiny dirt bike. Uh, let's talk about it. So the client uh, said to me that, uh, you know, something vague, like it you know, doesn't start. And also it was leaking fuel from the, uh, the carburetor uh, down in here. All right, so you can see here we got like a bubble. I was like right there. I don't, I don't, I don't. Something's leaking, right? Uh, let's talk about it. We got a rear, rear, rear disc brake and a front disc brake. So, okay, so front disc brake is on the left side. Right disc brake. Is, uh, it's gonna be so they never really got to really ride this thing it's pretty pretty new on a ribbon right, okay so we have kill switch here on the left side and this apparently is a uh, emergency kill switch we can Stall like that and pulls. Off, I don't know something like that, right? And then uh, over here we have a limiter screw for the throttle. So you can limit how much this can turn to control the speed. Okay, so get a pull start here. Pull start. Fuel shut off. And uh, this is going to be a choke. Why? Right Why here. do you do that? And then on this side, you do know. on this side of the, I think she think underneath. Uh, what do we have? What do we have? Let's see. We have. Great uh, parenting skills going on right there. Choke. One of these should be adjusting the uh, idle. This kind of this kind of uh, carburetor is new to me, so I'm not really sure what to. Uh, I don't really know what to expect. Let's see what we got. Oh, is there an idle screw? At least the manufacturer said there is an idle screw. Oh yeah, it'll be, it'll be right, oops, sorry, right down in there, see my finger, see that, no you can't, okay, so, right in here, alright, alright, right here, That bronze thing right there. That's gonna be. Oh, where am I at? Look for my finger. Right there. It's gonna be the idle screw. Alright, so that's a little overview of the bike. Hmm. Alright, let's, let's see what it is. It uses 25 to 1 fuel mixture, so it's a little, a little weird. But it makes up my little 25 to 1. Alright, let's see what happens. At this point, uh, I'm very much um, in the wrong. That is actually necessary. It needs to be placed at the very top, not at the bottom. And this is going to keep the engine running, as in, like, it needs to be in that top position for there to be spark. If you remove it, there'll be no spark. But I didn't know that. And I would know that if I read the manual. So, I'm saving you the time. Uh, you'll see me make many mistakes trying to fix the no spark situation. That's the first thing I want to do is just double check and see if I have spark. Spark plug seems to be under here. So, in line, you will not be able to probably see the spark because, well, just the nature of. Uh, how much sunlight we have going on out here. 
So I decided just to go back to like the old way of doing this. Just check and see we have spark. And uh so you can see right here there's a kill switch, right? And this is where we're gonna, gonna disable that from the system. So that way we can uh just kinda narrow it down, make sure we can get spark, you know. I don't see any sparks. So, just so you can see, there's a ground point right here on the chassis. This is where the actual uh, kill switch is uh, grounded out to, right here. That's what this wire is. That goes up to the kill switch, this right here, which continues up to the up to there. All right. So, with my tests, with my uh, Light, right? I'm looking here to see if I get voltage right here. If I can connect to that and get voltage, it'll be a plus. If I can see something pop up here for a hot second. Nothing gets outputted there. All right, let's try one more test. Well, one more once. So we can use this right here to see if we're getting any power on the uh, actual um, coming out of the spark plug wire. I'm sorry, the uh, magneto wire. So let's just see. So I got it turned on. You have to push down on this. And you look right here to see if the light changes. It changes every time the uh, it gets electrical charge going through it. Stuff's making it out to be a liar, isn't it? Anyway, so let's take a look at what should have happened, what I thought would have happened, right? Watch right there, you can see it gets kind of lights up a little. Oops. See? So, anyway, you get the point. It chooches. Hey, neighbors here. This is their bike. This is the 19 millimeter. So let's see what we get. How are you today? Good All this. Okay. Yeah, I'm documenting it. Just help anybody else. So okay. let's see what they can do. I got the whistle name in What's the up? house. The gas can. Oh, you do? Yeah, you can bring it if you want. Okay. That'd be nice. And I appreciate it. Oil. Okay, it thank you. Gas and yeah, oil. 25 to 1. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so we have a spark plug here. As you can see, this thing is very wet. So, I have an odd feeling it's, uh, this engine is flooded. So I noticed that this has fuel in it. Uh, I'm not really sure. I think this client initially had some problems with the uh, fuel ratio mixture doing it. So I think what we should do is kind of drain this. So we're gonna drain this fuel and make sure we use the one that we mixed. Just to make sure that we don't have too much oil or too little oil. for this kind of sucks. The manufacturer 
provides this container to help uh, with the 25 to 1 mixture ratio. It can be a little difficult if you've never done a mixture of oil and fuel before. So if you look closely, it's a little hard to see, but I've tried my best. There are two lines. So what you do, you fill with gasoline all the way up until you get to the bottom line. And it recommends um, 92 octane for this vehicle. And then that one little line right above it, you fill that with oil and then you shake it. You don't go all the way up to the top. If you do that with oil, it's going to be too much oil. And uh, that's what the client did. So remember, just stay between those lines for the oil. So you go fuel all the way up till you get to, I guess that would be 500 milliliters, probably on the right side. And then you add just enough oil to get to the very, very top of that line. If you look closely, it says 25 to 1. So that's how you can now that you're at the right spat. Right, so I'm going to make sure we have fuel going all the way to the uh, carburetor. And to do that, I'm just going to like take off this uh, bottom screw here. This should help me uh, see if we have a uh, fuel coming out of here because I don't know if this on is working or not you know so all right pull that screw out all right let's um, let's pour some of that fuel back in all right let's put this back on See if we have fuel that can pass through the system. Just unscrewing the uh, fuel cap for the actual vehicle itself. Uh, pouring some of the old fuel back inside of it. Okay, so I just poured some in. Let's see if it'll fill up. Yeah, let's pour all of it, most of it. So we'll see anything coming down. All right, let's see if we have any passage here. Yeah, this fuel. So fuel's getting all the way down to there. We know that. That's a good thing. Okay. So... Gets to there, but does it get past the actual shutoff? That's what I'm trying to figure out. So let me uh, turn this valve. Let's see. You should get fuel coming out of the bottom of the carburetor bowl. Okay. There we go. So that on there is working now. Can you see it? So that's a good thing, all right? So shut off works, on works. Okay, that's a good sign. Okay. So we know we have fuel. Okay. All right, that works. So let us go ahead and put this, save this fuel, put it back into here, and we can continue.
That's a doozy. All right, you can hear it. Run. All right, so we have no... You can see it runs without the kill switch. So I don't know. I don't see that kill switch is a problem, you know? Yeah. So I disconnected the kill wire from the uh, chassis and I put a little bit of fuel into the uh, spark plug cylinder. Let's see, uh, see if it actually will start. It should because it grounds out to the chassis to kill spark, you know? So here we go. What do we know? We have verified we have spark. We verified also that the engine will run. We have fuel getting all the way to the carburetor, at least at the bowl. Um, I want you to see something. So this is what is recommended, and I have to read the manual a little bit. Apparently you. It's at the top. I, when we did this earlier, it's not right. So you do that, you pull that off. That's supposed to kill spark in an emergency. Um, I want to put that uh, kill switch back on the chassis. See if that presses down, that makes a difference or not. I really don't know. Other than that, we're going to have to... Take that off because it just popped. So no choke now. That should work. Choke again. Half choke. No choke. Half choke. Choke. No choke. Swaddle open. Alright, so we're going to use some substantive fluid. And let's see how this engine behaves here. Let's just pour some fuel in it. Since we have spark, we know it runs, got good compression. Let's just see what happens, right? So this is my uh, 25 to 1 mix, not the one that the client had. Oh. Yeah, that's no so was that higher than that before? Uh, no, you uh, so when you when you put high choke on it uh, causes uh, more fuel to come into the system You don't need that right now because as soon as it turns over once or two times you have um, You have an engine All right, so Got no choke on We're just gonna like uh, got a little assistance here from my neighbor. I'm just gonna lift it up I'm gonna open up the throttle just a little bit, and you'll notice that we actually got it to start now. So, yep. Just a little bit of throttle. It cuts off, right? So either we need to turn up the idle. It's probably this is a very possibility one more time. Mm -hmm.
don't think you should just bring it up a little bit. Yeah, the thing is, it's like... You can try it, let's try it. It's a little bit of choke. No, you know, so as, as you said, it's saying, yeah, it floods the engine. So right now, I could have just flooded it by doing that. It's flooded now. Yeah. It's not staying on. Exactly. You see, I want to show you something here. So this right here, a little shaky cam like, but this here is going to adjust your idle. So you can see it. Turn clockwise to increase the idle. So, let's so turn, keep, keep track of what you're doing too. I'm going to do like half a turn right there. This is half a turn and I'm gonna check it and see if it'll stay on. That increased the uh, RPMs on the on the idle side. Let's try it without that. Uh, let's see if it'll just. I'm gonna try it without the uh, throttle. That's a good start. Get a little bit of throttle. So I'm gonna try to idle and get this uh, RPMs up a little bit and then uh, one more time. Turn up the uh, idle, the idle screw. The problem is now, right? We're gonna make sure it's not high enough. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's talk about it. What just happened? So the idle screw is really, really, really far out. Uh, I know. I don't know who did it or not. But maybe someone was trying to figure it out. But what happened is uh, it wasn't able to stay on. Now the issue is, right? We need to make sure that. We could start it without having to hit the throttle. Maybe it might work. I don't know how fine-tuned this motor is on these little things. I'm unfamiliar with this uh, architecture, but if it can start without having to like have the wheel lift up and no throttle, then we have a pretty good, uh, or a pretty good, um, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, carburetor that's uh, adjusted for this uh, um, latitude. No, 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 I'm sorry. This, um, gosh, this atmosphere that we're in. Okay, so that's the issue that we're having to figure out right now.